Well, hey guys, uh, today I'm going to be replacing the chain on my steel MS250 chainsaw. I'm going to walk you through step by step, so if you've never seen that process done, come on and check out this video. Well, hey guys, Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Guys, if this is your first time tuning in, welcome and thanks as well uh, for stopping by. Uh, give you a quick history of my channel. Uh, we are all about knocking out projects uh, one by one, getting them done, and as I learn things as I go, I like to pass all that information on to you. So if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that uh, subscribe, uh, hit that like as well, and share with your friends. So let me give you a quick um, story about what's going on today. Uh, as you guys, if you follow the channel any at all, you know my oldest boy, they're in the process of renovating a building that they have purchased and it's going to become a daycare center. Uh, the progress is going great. In fact, I need to do an update on that and I will soon. But uh, tomorrow, Corey has called and asked me, we need uh, to do some work and some clearing in the back uh, because that's where the playground area is going to be. And so tomorrow we will be doing some chainsaw work. So. Before that, I wanted to get everything ready with my chainsaw, so I have got a new chain to install, and I just want to do a general service, so tomorrow it will be ready to rock and roll. So anyway, guys, you know me. Let's get busy. Okay, guys, the first thing we're going to do is obviously remove the bar. To do that, we have to pull this cover. It's very simple. It's just these two screws. These these come with your uh, chainsaw kit, and they're great to, have, to hang on to and keep around. Uh, this bigger one has a much longer arm. It's easier to break loose. So we just do this and loosen these out. And I'll set that over to the side for now. And then once we do that, I'll go ahead and, and remove all of this. This just comes off the, there's a little locking pin that's used for the sharpening. And once you come off that, it, it'll slide back and you can get the whole thing off in one piece. And then for right now, I'm gonna set this over to the side because there's a couple of things I want to show you guys. All right, so um, if you're not, a, don't do a whole lot of chainsaw work, work and you're not familiar with these, uh, one of the things you can do is just kind of lay it out straight so you won't get confused on which side uh, of how this goes to whether, because you know, obviously you can put it on this way or you could put it on this way. If you put it on backwards, which trust me, I've done before. <laughs> when you go to start cutting, it won't cut. Uh, one of the easiest ways you can uh, keep up with it uh, on which way is, is the chain is going to spin over the top and you want the point as it's going over to the top pointing forward. As it comes down, the point's what's going to be doing your cutting. And so, but anyway, I just lay it out straight on the old one and that way I don't get it confused. The reason I'm taking this apart is I want to show you guys something. So um, one of the questions, you know, is how are you going to know what uh, you know, if you're like me, I don't deal with a chainsaw every day. I'm an amateur with this. I just do it for uh, property cleanup when we have storms. Uh, you know, I'm definitely not a pro and, and uh, uh, don't do it every day. So you're not gonna remember these type things because if you don't do it every day, the old scenario is if you don't use it, you lose it. So you got a few things you can do, uh, but I wanna show you a backup. So a lot of people will just take their box that comes with that, you know, when they get a chain, they'll just keep it stored somewhere in the toolbox when they need it. Uh, they'll uh, take the whole box uh, down to the dealership, say, I need another one of these and they'll fix you right up. Or a lot of people will put these and take a picture of it with their phone. And when they're coming home from work or whatever, they'll swing by, show them the picture and say, I need one of these. If you lose your picture, lose the box, don't worry. Uh, there's always a backup plan. Now, obviously, mine has been used quite a bit and I've lost a lot of the paint uh, from heat buildup and all. But if you look, and I don't know if the camera will show it or not, I will try my best to get it in here so you can see. But if you look on the back part here, all of the same information that is here on the box is right here on your bar. And so you can take a picture of that, uh, blow it up and uh, you know, uh, take that with you so you don't have to carry the whole purpose of I'm telling you this for is so you don't have to carry the whole chainsaw with you when you go last resort obviously is load up the chainsaw in your car and carry it with you and say I need a new chain for this uh, now in my area I'm not uh, all over this area uh, John Deere dealerships are steel dealerships and so they always have a very good supply and stock 
and I've never had an issue where they didn't have the parts I needed uh, for any of my steel stuff. That's one of the reasons why I've transitioned over to steel. All right, guys, sorry about the airplane flying over. Man, that dude was loud. Uh, so anyway, I just did a pause for a sec. All right, so a couple of things to note uh, on your bar. Um, two things I wanna share with you guys. Number one, when you change your chain, replace your chain, uh, as a habit, you don't have to do this, but it's just a good practice, is you can rotate your bar. It's exactly the same on both sides, and um, it, it'll work both ways. So what I will be planning to do is I will run my bar. This time, all the letters will be upside down, uh, and I'll run it like that for the new chain that I'm putting on. The other thing I want to show you guys is it's very crucial. These two holes here are for the lock in to tighten it. And then there's a third little bitty hole right here. And this is how the chainsaw gets your bar oil to the chain. And you wanna double check that and make sure that that is not clogged up. And in our case, we are good to go. But anyway, I'm going to just clean it real quick. Um, you know, obviously it's gonna get immediately back dirty, but just for, you know, when you do this, it's just good practice. Just do some general maintenance. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I like to throw a little bit of lubricant in for the sprocket that's on the end. I'm gonna lay this to the side for now. And just for the heck, I wanna go ahead and just clean this. So now I'm just gonna get in a general, just a, a cleanup mode, just to get all the crud off of it. Okay, with the same fashion, that I've cleaned the other stuff. I wanna go ahead and clean all this area as well. You can see it really can get clogged up and you just wanna make sure everything's nice and clean. This is the area that the oil comes out, goes onto the hole that gets the oil uh, to your chainsaw bar. So uh, you just, you know, not, not a big, I know it's gonna get back dirty fast, but it's not bad to just do a nice cleanup every now and then. So anyway, we'll get busy doing this one. Okay guys, so everything's been nice and clean. I've double checked my holes. I know they're all good. Uh, so we are all ready to go to put back together. One thing I like to do uh, before I start reassembling as well is this area here is your adjustment. And it's just not a bad habit to, to just put some silicon in there, some slick them, whatever you want to call it. Some, and uh, that just helps everything work good. Between it being nice and clean, uh, it just makes every, it'll make everything go back together so much better. So anyway, let's grab our new chain. And the biggest thing we want to be sure on is to make sure we've got it turned in the correct direction. And again, we're looking for the sharp points to go forward on top. So let's get this on, there we go. All right, and the points are to the front. So now I've got this one laid the same as this one. So we'll go ahead and take this one away. Okay, and then the one thing I wanted to do is I said I was gonna rotate this. And you can see there is a hole on both sides. Okay, once you get your chain on, then you just ease up over. I kind of come down at an angle, go ahead and get it over the sprockets, the teeth on the sprocket, and then work my way down. until I come down on the uh, piece of metal that sticks up that locks it in and this is the piece that runs forward and back that tightens up the chain. All right, we've already got all this clean, so this just drops right back down and see with everything being so nice and clean, it just falls into place so nice and easy. And so now we will tighten this up. So guys, I wanted to share uh, two tech tips with you. Uh, first of all, steel recommends, and I have found out uh, just through experience over years with dealing with different types of engines like this, uh, when a manufacturer recommends a certain oil, they've done the research, uh, they know it's got the ingredients in it to protect, 
Uh, they sell these little uh, deals at the dealership. What I love about these is they're pre-mixed for two and a half gallons. And for me, I've got a five gallon can, so it just makes the math so simple. Drop in two of these and fill it up with fuel and you're ready to go. So uh, again, I'm not sponsored by Steel. I'm not trying to, uh, uh, to sell an item. I just know I've been using this product for a bunch of years now, and this is the oil I'm using and I haven't had any problems. So it's like, why fix it if it ain't broke? So the other thing that I do with mine um, is around here, we can still get uh, leaded fuel. Uh, you know, the old kind of regular gas that has a meat to it. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, but there are certain places that sell it. And so I go purchase that and I use that uh, in all of my equipment, uh, whether I'm mixing fuel with it or just running it straight in the Gator, the lawnmower, whatever. Uh, and I think it makes a huge difference. Uh, the ethanol in fuel tends to want to eat up your uh, gas o-ring or your rubber go uh, grommets and o-rings inside the carburetor. And if you run that in time, you'll have problems. So I don't know what's best if you run the math. Uh, do you pay extra for the fuel and not have issues? Or do you get the cheaper gas and then the money that you save, you're going to spend it later on with a, uh, a, a repair bill for having to get your carburetor overhauled. Don't know which is the best way to go. I kind of go the trouble free way. And so that's, that's what I do. The other thing, I don't know if you guys are aware of, but when you purchase fuel uh, that is to be used on equipment that is not on the road, uh, i.e. your tractor, your lawnmower, your gator, your chainsaw, anything but your cars and your trucks that you drive up down the highways. Uh, all fuel, and I, I guess all fuel, I know around here it is, um, everything has different taxes added to the price of the fuel, and that is to pay for the highway systems. Well, you're not using yours for the highway system, so that is tax deductible. So if you guys were to keep all your receipts uh, and, and uh, put them in a separate deal for the year, and then itemize, uh, just add them up and give them to your tax person when you're doing your taxes, that is tax deductible and you can drop down. For me, I have a lot of yard work. I go through quite a bit of fuel each year, so it is worth my time to do. Don't know if you guys knew that. I've only recently learned that over the last bunch of years and uh, it's no issue with my tax guy. He just figures that in as one of the factors for deductions and I wanted to share with you. So anyway, hope those tech tips help. So we'll be heading up tomorrow to be working at the daycare and cutting all that wood. I'll uh, absolutely try my best to get videos of that. I also will we'll do a video update of what the inside looks like because wow, what a transformation that has been so far. And there's still a lot of work left to go. Uh, also guys, um, I will add it as an end screen to this video. Uh, I also have a video of changing, replacing the chain on a 12 inch bar for a pole saw. Uh, that's kind of cool too, so you might want to check that out. Again, remember here at Project Next, we try to do two uploads a week. Uh, try to have them go out on Mondays and Fridays. So please again, consider hitting that subscribe, grab the notifier so you won't miss any of the upcoming episodes. We got a lot of projects coming up this spring and we'd love for you to guys to come along for the ride. Again, thanks guys. Uh, you guys have a great week. Stay safe and we will talk at you soon. Thanks for watching and take care. See ya.